It's hard to imagine the iconic Apple keynote presentation without Steve Jobs. It's hard to imagine the purple and gold Staples Center without Kobe Bryant. Some personalities are so influential and awe-inspiring that it's difficult to imagine the world without them. And investment legend Warren Buffett is certainly that sort of iconic figure. Having built Berkshire Hathaway from the ground up to a conglomerate investment holding company worth more than $300 billion, Warren Buffett is seen as the irreplaceable foundation which the firm cannot stand on its own without him. Many people have asked the same question. Will Berkshire survive without Warren Buffett? In this video, we will study how Berkshire Hathaway runs their business, what are their core values, and try to answer this one of the most asked questions in the investment world. And in fact, the true secret of Berkshire's success actually hides in the company's name itself. Starting from the humble roots in 1965, Berkshire Hathaway has grown to become one of the world's largest corporations. Company's iconic leader Warren Buffett rocketed to fame in the 1990s as a savvy stock picking gained him shares in top companies such as American Express, Coca-Cola, and Washington Post. As a corporation, Berkshire Hathaway's holdings are vast and diversified, and its influence extends over a wide array of commercial retail, financial, and manufacturing industries. And it's not just through Berkshire's Hathaway's broad engagement in many different businesses that it demonstrated its ability to diversify. The company's subsidiaries differ widely in almost every measurable category, such as acquisition price, company size, and number of employees. With such a variety of companies under one roof, a degree of unity has to be expected. Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries do indeed share its own unique corporate culture built on core values that serve to bring unity to such a wide-ranging portfolio. In this way, unifying traits and commonalities are found in bonds of trust, rather than in simple financial metrics. These traits, when taken together, create the Berkshire Hathaway culture. Berkshire Hathaway's culture is made up of nine core values, and these nine core values are spelled out by the individual letters in the company's name itself, Berkshire. That is, for every letter, there is a corresponding value. First, the B stands for Berkshire Hathaway's most essential principles, budget consciousness. To understand this, let's take a look at one of Berkshire holding companies, Geico, a car insurer, implementing its budget conscious focus. Geico practices budget consciousness through serious frugality and extraordinary operating efficiency. The company's goal to keep costs at an absolute minimum isn't just about increasing profits. In fact, Geico passes along most of its savings to their customers as lower premiums. This policy in turn attracts more customers and results in a greater total premium volume for the company. Next, the E refers to earnestness. The value of keeping promises, under-promise and over-deliver is a core characteristic trait which broadly applies to all Berkshire subsidiary companies. For example, in the months after the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the US, one of Berkshire's subsidiary company called NICO, the National Indemnity Company, wrote large-scale terrorism policies, including a $1 billion payout for several international airlines and a $500 million payout for an overseas oil platform just to keep their promises. This helps them attract more clients and bigger contracts for Berkshire in the long run. A good reputation goes a long way. Investing in the value of reputation, the R in Berkshire has paid off for Berkshire Hathaway big time. Successful furniture retailer and Berkshire Hathaway subsidiary, Jordan's Furniture earns about $950 of revenue per square foot annually, a number that's nearly six times over the industry average. The secret? Jordan's Furniture stores have a solid reputation of shoppertainment, combining furniture shopping experience with entertainment. At one Jordan store, for instance, you can take a seat in a small theater to watch a flight simulation, and in another one, you can even have a riverboat tour. These entertaining in-store concepts build a strong shoppertainment reputation for the company, and their investment has paid off. The K in Berkshire stands for kinship. 
Everyone in Berkshire Hathaway is like family to each other, and the majority of them invest more than half of their assets back in Berkshire. They aim to create wealth that lasts generations, in the same way that a tight-knit family values identity and legacy. Many of Berkshire's investors are family offices. Berkshire Hathaway does business for the long term. This makes family businesses particularly attractive for it, as they are often characterized by powerful bonds such as fairness, mutual respect and trust, and in business, this pays off. As an entrepreneur in the field of acquisitions, Warren Buffett showed how a small business could transform into a huge corporation. And it's no surprise that his entrepreneurial spirit still fuels Berkshire's company culture. The S in Berkshire means that Berkshire's managers must be self-starters. They are entrepreneurs who have a vision and can run a business on their own. The H stands for hands-off management. This goes hand-in-hand -hand with the previous core value. To encourage a self-starter mentality in employees, Berkshire practices a handoff management approach. Most businesses are often organized bureaucratically, marred in endless committees and meetings with multiple layers of reporting. In contrast, Berkshire's management values decentralize and autonomy. Every subsidiary stands on its own, and only the most critical decisions are made at headquarters. Interestingly, Berkshire Hathaway subsidiary companies employ more than 300,000 people while Berkshire's headquarters still runs like a startup with less than 20 employees. This hands-off management style is exactly what makes Berkshire attractive to brilliant self-starters. Executives appreciate that they can continue running their businesses independently, yet feel secure in a partnership with Berkshire for the long run. Over 50 years, Berkshire Hathaway has acquired dozens of companies, and the value of each has increased significantly over time. How has the firm managed to do this? Because Berkshire subsidiary companies invest their revenues and do a lot of acquirings too, and are successful at it, guided by Warren Buffett. They have the investor savvy mindset, and that's what the I in Berkshire stands for. This means that subsidiary companies keep an eye out for companies with an organizational culture that fits their own, which enables them to attract a target company without even having to make the highest bid. Warren Buffett is the icon of fundamental analysis when it comes to investing, and he loves fundamentally sound and simple businesses. In fact, he once famously said that he likes buying those businesses with a business model that is so simple he can explain to his neighbor in a minute. The R in Berkshire stands for rudimentary. It shows Berkshire's acquisition criteria and businesses that are essential and also easy to understand. The classic example is Coca-Cola. The logic is that such businesses have been around for a long time and well understood. Also, such businesses are expected to be around for many more years, or even generations to come, which align with Berkshire's long-term value. At Berkshire Hathaway, it is more important to keep things simple and not to lose money, rather than to make money by taking big risks. Many people fear that losing Warren Buffett could mean the end of Berkshire Hathaway. But keeping in mind that the company's last core value, the E in Berkshire, stands for eternality. Buffett has developed his company's culture and practices in a way that will see Berkshire Hathaway endure long after he is gone. Since 1993, Buffett has written a number of articles about what Berkshire should be without him. And he has also formalized with the board a succession plan which prescribes splitting Buffett's job into two separate roles, management and investment. Berkshire Hathaway has since recruited investment managers Todd Coombs and Ted Weschler, two men who possess the necessary skills to handle the investment line of Buffett's job. Amazingly, both of them have even surpassed Buffett's investment performance in recent years. The most important trait for a successor as a management executive in Berkshire is a commitment to Berkshire's culture. The exact thing that made Berkshire Hathaway such a successful company today. Therefore, as the succession plan outlines, the best candidates are the insiders. Of course, there is no question that Warren Buffett's successor, whoever they may be, will certainly face challenges. First big challenge is how to manage Berkshire subsidiary companies without Warren Buffett. Those companies' fellowship to Buffett is more than just business, it's like a religion. 
Buffett's successors will have to vet managers and executive boards carefully to avoid these tense relations between subsidiaries and ensure that Berkshire's nine core values are above their own personal interests. Another challenge is carrying on Buffett's iconic approach to investing, acquisition, and deal making. Value investing has underperformed the vast majority of other investment approaches in the recent two decades. With the ever-changing financial market each year and economic regime shift each decade, Buffett's successors will have to find their ways to carry on the torch of value investing in the increasingly challenging financial markets. In the late 2000s, Wall Street analysts worried whether Apple would survive without Steve Jobs. Today, the investment community is confronting a similar question as it attempts to divine the fate of Berkshire Hathaway, considering that Warren Buffett is turning 90 years old this year. The similarities between Apple and Berkshire Hathaway are surprisingly many. Both have the highest top-notch standard of what they do for their customers and clients in their own industry. Both have a strong and unique culture that runs into the company's DNA. And of course, both companies were founded and managed by iconic visionary leaders who left an incredible legacy to the world. In fact, in 2016, Warren Buffett, who isn't a big fan of high-growth technology companies, started accumulating Apple shares. Today, Berkshire is one of the biggest shareholders of Apple. Though few things are certain, especially in the fast-paced financial industry, when Berkshire Hathaway holds true to its nine core values, it would be able to live on and continue to prosper even after Warren Buffett is gone.